Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello students, I hope you are okay and you are watching your TVs to enjoy our educational program. As usual, I am teacher John Bosco, in short it is JB, and uh, we are going to be learning physics together as we have always been doing. Now today's lesson is intended for senior one, physics, but it is very useful also for those in senior two and senior three. So if you are three and you're in senior two or three, you can hang around and enjoy our lesson. Now, uh, today's topic is unit four, that is Newton's laws of motion. We are beginning a new topic, a new unit. Uh, and the lesson title for today is Newton's first law of motion. That is what we want to discuss today. And at the end of this lesson, I would like that all the students should be able to relate mass and inertia. You should be able to relate those two. And also, you should be able to state Newton's first law of motion. So that is our lesson objective today. And of course, here you can see we have a series of new words, you no know, key words, that by the end of the lesson, we should uh, ensure that we understand what they mean. Mass, force, inertia, seat belt, law of inertia, and perhaps many others that we shall get during the lesson. Now, before we start, I want us to review what you guys uh, learned in uh, Unit 3 and uh, Unit 2 and perhaps Unit 1. And some of you learned it, of course, in primary, which is effects of force and also the meaning of mass. Now, very quickly, mass is the quantity of matter that a body contains. That's the meaning of mass. The quantity of mat matter that a body contains. Every object that you can see around us, even others that we don't see, constitute matter. So they have uh, a quantity that we refer to as mass. Uh, today also we shall see that mass may also be defined as a measure of a body's inertia. Right now we do not understand what inertia is, but we shall be able to relate mass to inertia. And effects of force, you know force is that which causes, changes a body's state. If a body has been at rest, it makes a body to begin doing what? Moving. That is called force. You have looked at it before. And there are so many effects of force that you know. For instance, this is a rubber band that many of you, you like to use for tying money. So if I apply a force, you can see that this rubber band becomes longer. So it means force can make a body to become longer. A force can also uh, distort a body. This is a piece of cotton, piece of cotton. If I apply force to this cotton, you can see what is happening. It has distorted it. The shape has changed. Before it wasn't like this. It can even compress. You know, if I apply a compressive force, you can see the piece of cotton has become quite very small. So many other effects of force. Here I have a softball. Many of you must have seen it. If I put it here, as you can see, it's not moving, it's at rest. If I apply a force to this softball, it may begin moving. For instance, I'm going to flick this softball like this. You can see it has begun moving. So it means force can also cause a body to begin moving. Another effect of force is that once the body is moving and I apply a force, then the body can stop. We also have other effects of force. If a body is moving and I apply a force, then the body changes its direction of movement. You can see it is moving this way. I apply a force, it moves the other side. There are so many effects of force that we have. But today, we are going to limit ourselves onto the effect of force that creates motion. Okay? Effect of force that creates motion. And so, let's begin by defining inertia. Right here you can see 
inertia is defined as the reluctance, reluctance, that's kind of a new word to you, right? Reluctance of a stationary body, maybe this word stationary is also new, to start moving or a moving body to stop. So the key word there is reluctance. Reluctance is resisting to do something. If you have been at rest and you are reluctant to move, it means you do not want to do what? To begin moving. Reluctance to stop moving means you have been moving, but you do not want to start moving. And that property of a body that deals with reluctance to start moving or reluctance to stop moving is what is called inertia. So master those key words, reluctance and stationary body. This means body which is not moving. Reluctance means resistance to do something. And so we are going to have one demonstration. And you see, the beauty of physics is using the apparatus, the equipment, the objects around us to make us understand the concepts of physics. And that's why you see on the table we have so many everyday uh, life objects that we shall use to understand physics. So uh, we are going to demonstrate the effect of inertia on two different bodies. We have this soft ball, this soft ball, I think you can see it very well. It's very small compared to this. And I'm sure all of you know this. What do you call this? Volleyball, yes. Many of you like playing this volleyball. And as you can see, it is heavier than this. So comparing these two, which one do you think has a higher mass? Is it this, the softball, or the volleyball? Volleyball? Good. So the volleyball has got a higher mass. So what I'm going to do, remember, we want to demonstrate inertia. That is the main purpose of this demonstration. So I'm going to have a rubber band. When I pull this rubber band, I will transfer my chemical energy into the rubber band. So the rubber band can produce a force. So this force will be transferred to the soft ball. So watch what I'm going to do. You can do this at home very easily on your dining table or on the floor. It can work very well. Just ensure the floor is smooth enough. So I am going to exert a force by releasing this rubber band that I've pulled and observe what will happen to the soft ball. Do you see what is happening to the soft ball? What is happening to it? It is moving. Because I've applied a force, so it is able to move. Okay, let us repeat the same process with the bigger ball. Remember we said, this is bigger, it has more mass than the soft ball. Okay, it's so stationary there. I'm going to give it approximately the same amount of force and observe what will happen. Do you see what happens? Does the ball move? Okay, if you didn't see it, let me repeat the process again. I'm going to give it a small force. Same force I gave to this soft ball. Does it move? No, it doesn't move. So what does it mean? It means the reluctance to begin moving by these two objects are different. This one has less reluctance to begin moving. This one has got what? More reluctance. So in terms of inertia, what does it mean? Do they have the same inertia? No. This one has a small inertia, and this one has a big inertia. And we said we want to relate mass of a body to its inertia. So what does it mean? It means if you have got a small mass 
an object has got a small what? A small mass. Then it means it also has a small what? Inertia. When it has a small inertia, it means it is very easy for that object to begin doing what? Moving. And if you have a body with a large mass, it means it also has a large inertia. And a body with a large inertia means it does not begin moving very easily. And the same thing happens to stopping also. A body which does not move, start moving very easily is also very hard to do what? To stop. So that is the meaning of inertia. Then, let's move to the first activity, which you can perform by the at home very easy. And the first activity, the title is Bottle and Coin Experiment. So right here, I got, I've got a bottle. This is an ordinary water bottle, which I believe you have at home. And a coin. This is a hundred francs coin, Ijana. Everybody can have access to this. But you can also use something else. If you have a die, like this, dies, or you have a bottle top, all of them can work. So what we are going to do, as the procedure say, we place a small hard manila paper on the mouth of an empty bottle. So this is my manila paper which is yellow in color. Uh, you just get a razor blade or anything, then you cut it into a small piece. So this is what we have, and certainly this is what we have there. And then you can then put uh, the coin on the paper, or your, your dice on the paper. Then we are going to flick. Do you guys know how to flick? Just check how I'm going to flick this paper. Look here. Flicking means this. You can do this. So you apply a gentle force using your finger. And that's what we are going to do. So we are going to apply a force on the manila paper and see what happens. Then we make our observation and perhaps conclude. Okay, so observe carefully what we are going to do. Let me remove this ball so you can observe this carefully. Right. So, here we go. Do you see what, 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 what has happened? I flicked... Okay. I flicked the paper. What happened to the, the dice? It fell right inside. Let's repeat it. Let's repeat it one more time. Here we go. It's my manila paper. Put it on the mouth of the glass and put your dice on top. Then flick the paper. Do you see what happens? The paper flies away, but the dice falls right inside. Okay, you might think it only happens with the dice. Let's take the dice away. Let's try it with a coin. This is just a small bottle, which you can afford to have. Same thing. So I'm going to flick the paper again. You see what happens? The coin falls right inside. We need to flip it horizontally. Then it will fall right inside. Okay, so what conclusion can we draw from these experiments, these observations that we have here. The conclusions that we can draw is that when you apply a force to the paper, it is only the paper which moves. But the coin does not move. So as the paper moves, the coin falls right in through, right inside the glass. And that is inertia. And that's why when you are in a car, think about it. When you're in a car, you have passengers in a moving car. When the car begins to move, 
What happens to the passengers? They jerk backwards. Why? Because of inertia. They want to remain in that state of not moving. They don't want to start moving. Also, if a car is already moving and the driver suddenly stops, what do you observe? You as a passenger, you continue moving forward, and yet the car has already stopped. And that's why when you are boarding a vehicle, a vehicle is moving, we need to put on a seat belt. You know a seat belt? Do you know a seat belt? Yes. What you tie around from your shoulder going down when you sit in a car, that is called a seat belt. I believe everybody knows it. We need to tie a seat belt so that it can prevent us from getting injuries once we are in a car and the car suddenly stops. Very important. Then we want to look at activity number two. Activity number two, we have given it, it a title, raw and boiled eggs. A very interesting experiment. As I told you, we can use objects around us to really understand uh, the concepts of physics very, in a very simple way. And you can do this at home. Very okay for you to do it. So right here, I have got three eggs. You know what an egg is? I believe so. This egg is raw, and that means if you allow it to fall, it can easily crack. So I'm going to take uh, very good care of it. These two are also eggs. They don't look like eggs, yes, because I just colored them. I got a marker and then painted them so that we can differentiate them. This is the red egg and this is the blue egg. We are going to use these eggs to try to explain what inertia is. Now, at the end of this uh, experiment, you should tell us, you should be able to tell which egg is boiled and which one is not boiled, which one is raw and which one is it? boiled. So this is what we are going to do. Remember, you can do this at home. I'm going to start with the red egg. Observe this carefully. Very interesting experiment. So I'm going to spin. You know, spinning, you make something move round. That is to spin. So I'm going to spin this egg. I'm going to spin this egg and observe what happens. As it is spinning, I'm going to touch it with a finger so that it stops. Then I remove my finger. And we see what happens. Ready? Okay. So I'm going to spin. You see it is spinning? So I will put my hand to stop it, remove my finger, and then observe what happens. Right. So let's go. Stop it. Remove the hand. Do you see what is happening to the egg? Let's repeat it one more time. Spin it. Stops. Remove the hand. Do you see what is happening to the egg? Does it continue to spin? Yes. Let's look at the blue egg. I'm going to repeat the same procedure. Let's spin it together. Spin, stop, remove the hand. Does it continue to spin? Okay. Let's repeat one more time, right? Spin, stop it, remove your hand. Spin, Stop it, remove the hand. Look at this. Spin, spin, stop, remove the hand. Spin, stop, remove the hand. For red, spin, stop, remove the hand. Do you see the difference? So what I can see here is that the red egg when we spin it and stop it, it continues to spin again. The blue egg, when we spin it and we stop it, it stops also. So which of these two is the raw egg? All right. You have given your answer. So the thing is, the red one is the raw egg. 
How many of you say the raw egg is the red one? Great. The red one is the raw egg. And the blue one is the boiled egg. So what is the reason? The reason is this. Inside the egg, you know there's a liquid. So when we rotate, when we spin the egg, the liquid inside is also doing what? Spinning. So if we stop like this, we have only stopped the shell of the egg. But the liquid in the, inside the egg still continues to do what? To spin. Okay? You stop it, the liquid inside still continues to spin. But for the case of this egg, the blue one, okay, if you spin it like this and you stop it, it does not continue to spin again. It just rolls away because this is a smooth surface. But it does not spin. We are not talking of rolling, but spinning. The motion that we gave it was a spin. Stop it. It doesn't continue to spin. But this, roll, spin it, you stop it, it continues to spin. Because that egg has got a liquid inside. And once you set that liquid in motion, then the liquid does not want to stop moving. And that property, remember we said, is called what? Inertia. I hope uh, that is clear to you. So the red egg is the raw egg because it continues to spin. The, the blue egg is the boiled egg because it stops to spin at once. So you can imagine, that's the beauty of physics. Using the knowledge of inertia uh, in everyday life. So that is our activity number two. So under this, you will write your observation about the blue egg and the red egg, and also uh, which egg is boiled. Remember, we have said it's the red egg, I mean, the red egg, and also uh, explain in terms of uh, inertia why you think it is the red egg. Remember, we said the red egg has a liquid inside. As we stop the shell of the egg from spinning, the liquid inside continues to, to spin. And that's why this is the raw egg. Good. So let's come back to our chart of keywords here. Do we now understand the meaning of mass that we had looked at before? Remember we said mass is the what? The quantity of matter contained in a what? In a body. The egg as a mass, because there's matter inside the egg. The egg itself is matter. We also said that we would understand that mass is a measure of a body's inertia. A body which has a small inertia has a small mass. And a body which has a big inertia has a big what? A big mass. So mass is a measure of a body's inertia. That's what we talked about also. Uh, we looked at force already. I believe inertia. We are comfortable with it. Then law of inertia. Law of inertia is Newton's first law of motion, which says everybody continues in a state of rest, meaning that everybody will continue being at rest. Unless a force acts on it. If no force acts on it, then that body will continue being at rest. Like this ball, if I don't apply any force on this ball, you see this ball? It will continue being here forever, unless a force acts on it. Or, if it is already moving in a state of uniform motion, that is moving with a same speed, it will continue moving in a straight line, unless a certain force also acts on it, which makes it to either stop, or it will make it to slow down. That means moving slowly. So that is Newton's first law of motion. Can we read it together? Newton's first law of motion states that everybody continues in a state of rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless an external force acts on it. And remember, we don't need to cram this rule. We can get the rule 
in another way. You can use other sets of words to explain the same Newton's law of motion. We don't need to cram it. Just try to understand it. And the understanding is, if a body is not moving, it will continue being at rest unless you push it or you pull it. If it is moving, it will continue moving unless you stop it, you apply a force, then it will stop. And so Newton's first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. So when you talk of law of inertia, it is the same, th same thing as Newton's first law of motion. Now, you might be wondering why we are studying this. It has so many applications, as we have seen. Seat belts, when you're in a car, put on your seat belt so that it protects you from crashing against the windscreen of the car and you avoid injuries. If you are a driver, you guys are, you students are still young, but if you're a driver, the traffic police tells you not to overspeed because if you overspeed, you don't have uh, a short braking distance. When you see something on the road, you need some distance, some time to stop. So if you are moving very fast, and then you are decide to stop abruptly, you are going to knock the windscreen and possibly you could, you could die or injure other people. So there are lots of applications. And this is also related to other, 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 other subjects. Like in sports. This is linked to sports. In sports, for athletes to accelerate, to move very quickly, they need to have a small mass. If they have a very big mass, they cannot ac accelerate very quickly. So in sports, the idea of inertia is used to help athletes so that they are able to accelerate very fast and win the race. And there are so many other applications of inertia in other subjects. And so lastly, we want to leave you with this activity, number three, which is a set of questions that you can research on. You go to the internet, if you have access to the internet, right? Yes. If you don't have access to the internet, you could consult your textbooks. Remember the textbooks provided by Reb? You can consult them and then try to read about inertia and Newton's first law of motion. So answer the following questions. One, define the term inertia. Looks good, right? Can you? You don't necessarily need to cram these words as long as they mean the same thing. Two, it is more difficult to stop a moving lorry than a moving bicycle. Why? Three, why do passengers wear seat belts when they're in a car? Can you answer that with relevant physics? I find it so interesting. Four, when a person alights, to alight from a car means to get out of the car. To get out of the car. So when a person alights from a moving bus, to alight means to come out of the car. A moving bus, he or she is likely to fall down. So when the bus is moving and then you come out, it's very dangerous, you are likely to fall down. Why is this so? And then last question, when a car suddenly stops, the passengers jack forward. Jack forward like this. So explain why. And so that is the end of our lesson today. Next time we shall be able to look at Newton's second law. I wish you the best. Thank you for attending the lesson. Bye.